Hello biology students and welcome to the second half of our cellular reproduction unit which is going to be all about meiosis. Um, so as you remember from earlier in the year there are two types of reproduction that we see um, in organisms. So the first type, an asexual reproduction, we have one parent producing identical offspring. So this was exactly what we saw in mitosis in the last half of the unit. We saw a cell dividing and creating a new cell, a new daughter cell, that was identical to it. The other type of reproduction is sexual reproduction. And here we're going to have two parents, so two cells coming together to create offspring that do not look identical to either parent. So meiosis, the second half of our unit, is involved in sexual reproduction. So in sexual reproduction, we have two main steps. So in the first step, that's going to be meiosis. And here we're going to be taking a diploid germ cell and creating haploid egg and sperm cells. So I know you're right now you're probably saying diploid, I don't know what that means, and haploid, I don't know what that means. For now, don't worry, don't worry about those words. Just know in meiosis, we're going to be creating egg and sperm. And then in the second half of, fertiliz of sexual reproduction, we're going to have fertilization. So this is where the sperm is going to fertilize the egg, and we're going to get a zygote. And zygote is just a fancy word for the cell that's formed when a sperm fertilizes an egg. And because we're having the genes from two indi different individuals coming together, we're going to produce genetic variation among our offspring. Okay. So before we kind of get into some of the details of meiosis, there are, there are a bunch of vocabulary words that we have to be familiar with. So first, we've already talked about chromosomes already in this unit, but we're going to break it down a little bit more. And now I'm going to tell you that there are actually two different types of chromosomes in um, a individual. So the first type of chromosomes are called sex chromosomes, and these are the chromosomes that contain the genes that give you your um, sex characteristics. Um, that, so these, hormo these uh, chromosomes contain the genes for hormones and other things similar to that. So there are two different types of um, sex, sex chromosomes in humans. There's the X and the Y chromosome. So if you're female, you have two X chromosomes. And if you're a male, you have an X and a Y. So that's sex chromosomes. So the other type of, of chromosome that you have in your body are called autosomes. And these are basically all of the chromosomes that do not determine sex. So the chromosomes that carry all the other genes in the body. So here, um, we have a picture of what's called a karyotype. And basically, a karyotype is when um, you take some cells out of a person and extract the chromosomes and then dye the chromosomes so they have a color. And then you can kind of look at the, the, a picture of the chromosomes and look for any abnormalities. So in this case, the chromosomes are not replicated. So each little line like this represents one chromosome. So if we look at this picture, we can see that this person has two copies of chromosome 1. They have two copies of chromosome 2, two copies of chromosome 3, etc., etc. And then way down here at the bottom, they have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So this individual is a male. So what you may have noticed in the previous picture is that in a human, we we have 23 different chromosomes, but we actually have two copies of each of those chromosomes. So back in that previous picture, we had two chromosome ones, two chromosomes twos. So if you have a cell that has two copies of each chromosome, the word we have for that is called a diploid. Diploid meaning you have two copies of each chromosome. We also um, can refer to that cell as being 2N, where N refers to the number of distinct chromosomes. So we have 23 copies, I mean, sorry, 23 chromosomes and two copies of each. So we refer to um, our cells as being 2N or diploid. Okay. So in this picture, um, it, it becomes much more clear that we are a diploid organism. So in this case, the chromosomes are already replicated, so they're in their X form instead of the form we saw in the last karyotype. And you can see if you look, we have two copies of chromosome 1, two copies of chromosome 2, etc., etc., until you get all the way down to the sex, chromo sex chromosomes and see we have a copy of the X and a copy of the Y. Okay. 
So at this point, you might be wondering, well, why do we have two copies of each chromosome? And the answer to that is because we inherit one copy of each chromosome from our mother and one copy from our father. So in other words, um, one of your chromosome ones came from your mother and one came from your father. A one of your chromosome twos came from your mother and one came from your father. So when the sperm fertilizes the egg, the sperm has one copy of each chromosome and the egg has one copy, and that results in a cell that has a pair of each chromosome type. Now, if we were in class, now I would ask you the question, well, do you think the two copies of each chromosome are identical? Um, but unfortunately, I can't ask you that now. But the answer is no, because they came from different parents, and different people have different versions of different genes. Um, so the next vocabulary word I want to introduce you to is the word homologous chromosomes, or homologs. And this is just the word we use to refer to a pair of chromosomes. So the two copies of chromosome 1 are called homologous chromosomes. Uh, the two copies of chromosome 2 we call homologous chromosomes. It's just the vocab word we use to refer to the pair. Okay. So here's a picture of some homologous chromosomes. So up here, the chromosomes on top, you can see I refer to this pair of chromosomes as homologous because it's the two chromosomes that go together. Um, homologous chromosomes have the same genes on them, but they might have different versions of a gene. So for example, if you look at this pair of homologous chromosomes, they both have the B gene, but this blue chromosome over here has the lowercase b version of that G gene, and this chromosome on the right has the capital B version of that gene. So to kind of put this in terms that might make sense to you, we could say that both chromosomes have the gene for eye color, but the one on the left has the version of the gene for blue eyes, and the one on the right has the version of the gene for brown eyes. Same genes, different versions of those genes. Okay. So th this slide is reiterating just that. So in your body, almost all of your cells, all body cells are diploid. Almost all of your cells have two copies of each chromosome. And homologs... They, again, they have the same gene. So in this case, both of your chromosome ones might have the gene for eye color. But because those genes came from different parents, they might have what we call different alleles. So allele is just a version of a gene. So in this case, one parent might have the allele for brown eyes, and the other parent might have given you the allele for blue eyes. In humans, we have 46 chromosomes total, which means that we have... 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes with the same genes, but different versions of those genes or different alleles. Okay, um, so this slide just kind of reiterates some of the vocabulary um, we've been going over um, the last couple slides. So again, homologs, that's just another word for homologous chromosomes or the two, or the two chromosomes in a pair of chromosomes. And again, these chromosomes look exactly the same. They have the same size, they have the same shape, they have the same genes, but they have different versions of those genes. Um, allele is just the fancy vocabulary word we have for version of a gene. Um, so an example, if an example of a gene is eye color, and then the alleles of that gene would be things like brown, blue, green, or hazel. Um, and then finally, don't confuse sister chromatids with homologous chromosomes. Sister chromatids, remember, are the two identical copies of a chromosome we make during S phase, where the two homologous chromosomes are just the two versions of the same um, chromosome that you inherit from both your mother and your father. Okay. So, like we said earlier, most of the cells in your body are diploid, but you do have some haploid cells in your body. So, haploid are cells, haploid cells are cells that only have one copy of each chromosome. So, for example, sperm and eggs, they only have one copy of each chromosome. So, they only have 23 chromosomes total. And we can refer to these, these cells as either haploid or 1N, meaning they have one copy of the set of chromosomes. And it's kind of a good thing that sperm and eggs have only are, are haploid. Because if I'm going to get a sperm to fertilize an egg, that means the sperm is, at, is adding its DNA to the egg's DNA. And therefore, after fertilization, 
if we start with haploid cells with only one N, we'll end up with a fertilized egg that is 2N, which is, which is exactly where we want to be if we're going to create a new individual. Okay. So in fertilization, I take the spermatozoa, which is really just a fancy name for the word sperm, that's 1N, and it fertilizes the ovum, which is a fancy word for, the, for an egg, which is also haploid. So now I'm getting two nuclei coming together to create one diploid cell, which we call a zygote. And then that zygote will then undergo mitosis to create an entire individual. So here we can see the same thing in picture form. So I'm starting with maybe a cell from your mother and a cell from your father. Those cells are going to undergo the process of meiosis that we haven't talked about yet to create haploid eggs and sperm. And then the sperm will fertilize the egg to give us a diploid fertilized egg. So meiosis is an essential process because without meiosis, we cannot create haploid cells. And we, when we need to have haploid cells, they're going to come together to create a diploid organism. Um, so here, this picture is showing the same thing. So here are two diploid organisms, a male and a female. Through meiosis, we're going to get the haploid gametes. So the one N egg and the one egg um, N sperm. The sperm will then fertilize the egg to create my diploid zygote or diploid fertilized egg. And that zygote will then undergo mitosis to become a full diploid organism. Okay. So to summarize a little bit, so gametes, and by the way, gametes is just a fancy word for sex cells, so egg and sperm. So these are made by the process of meiosis. Um, this process happens in the reproductive organs. So in, in the males, that's in the testes, and in the females, that's in the ovaries. Um, if we're using meiosis to create an egg... But again, ova is just a fancy word for egg. We call that process oogenesis. And if we're using meiosis to create a sperm or spermatozoa, we call that process spermatogenesis. That's really fun to say. Ooh. Okay. So the important things about meiosis is we use it to cut the number of chromosomes in half. So that way, when my egg and sperm come together, we'll create a normal diploid cell. Um, in this process, we're going to take one diploid cell to create four haploid cells. Um, and we're going to see later on that meiosis happens in two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. And then at the end of the whole process, we end up with haploid cells that can then fertilize each other to create a new organism.